Hi, good evening. Hi, Vikas. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to Unsuited. We're here with season three. This time, IDEX Legal and the Grey Matter have collaborated with the Arbitration Pledge Group, where we're going to collectively focus on talking to accomplished women in the law. Here's a short message from Sharina Pettit, the chair of the India Group of the Pledge Movement. Let's listen in. The Pledge for the Equal Representation of Women in Arbitration is delighted to support Unsuited. By way of introduction, I am Sharina Pittett, the head of the India Group at Norton Fulbright in London and the chair of the India chapter of the Pledge. By way of collaboration of the Pledge and Unsuited, we hope to be able to mobilize thoughts and action towards making the women practicing law, be it at the bar or law firms or within companies, more accessible and more rewarding. This season of Unsuited focuses on having meaningful, open, free-flowing conversations across jurisdictions and across generations. By these conversations, the hope is to build a solid foundation for the women of today and of tomorrow, not just by highlighting challenges, but also by reiterating how nurturing infrastructure can assist women in law to stay on to succeed, and for some to break the proverbial glass ceiling. Thank you. Thanks, Sharina. That was a fantastic introduction and explanation there. I think the numbers in India and globally are fairly dismal when it comes to women in law, especially in leadership roles. What we're trying to do through this season and through this collaboration with the Pledge Movement is bring to the forefront voices of some very strong women in law. We're going to talk to them about their challenges faced, about the infrastructures that supported them, and largely hope that they will be able to pave the path for many more to come. Our first guest today is Madhavi Guradia Divan. She's an additional solicitor general with the Supreme Court and one of the youngest women to have to have been appointed to this post. She's also a designated senior counsel based out of Delhi. She's an author of a book titled Facets of Media Law. Welcome to the show, Madhavi. Hi, thank you. Hi, Madhavi. Thanks for joining. Madhavi is going to be joined by our second guest, Nandini Khetan, who's a partner of the Dispute Resolution Group and a partner with Khetan and Company. She's currently based out of Calcutta. She was part of the core team when Khetan and Company moved to Bombay and set up here. She's done her LLM from Colombia, and she's a huge champion and advocate of the IDIA project, which is increasing diversity by increasing access to legal education, a pan-India movement to train underprivileged students and help transform them into leading lawyers and community leaders. Hi, Nandini. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Hi. Thank you for having both of us. It's an absolute mm -hmm. pleasure. All right. Vikas, over to you. Great. So, um, We'll do a quick introduction to your career. So Madhavi, you, you started your career um, around 1994 in Mumbai um, and spent about 10 years building your career from the ground up you know, in, that, in that region. Um, and then after about a decade doing so, you had to relocate back to home to Delhi where you literally had to start your process and your career all over again. And you mentioned in those early days back in Delhi, you would deliberately take up matters in Mumbai <clears throat> just to keep you mentally engaged and busy on challenging matters. Um, but you slowly grew your own practice, moving to the Supreme Court in 2007 and focusing on a range of subjects, including constitutional law, media, and environmental law. Um, in 2018, you became only the third woman in Indian history to be appointed <clears throat> additional solicitor general. And in your career to date, uh, you once mentioned that for 20, out of the 25 years at the bar, being a woman was your biggest liability, which we'll come on to later to dissect. Um, Nandini, um, welcome again to Unsuited. Um, it's well documented that you were the first woman in the family to not just...
couples who you would see every day putting on their black gowns and black jackets and going to the office. Um, and you were thrown in at the deep end um, as you were sent to Mumbai at the beginning of your career um, where the new practice was being founded around 2000. And the initial years you mentioned were difficult as you didn't really enjoy corporate law, but when the litigation practice was set up around 2004, you started to thrive under the mentorship of Chakrapani Mishra. Um, and in 2010, you went off to Colombia to do your LLM before returning home to Calcutta, where you furthered your career, becoming equity partner in 2016. So thank you, Madhvi and Nandini, for being our first guest on series three of Unsuited. Thank you. Madhvi, you're not very audible. Can you just say a quick hello? Hi, hi. <laughs> Um, yeah. Yes, it's, yes, it's better now. Thanks. Okay, so we're going to start off with the first segment, ladies. As we know, this is a this this season especially is focused on empowered women, such as the both of you, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about you know the broad, broader spectrum of women in law in India specifically, and uh, we have some questions around you know your respective journeys, and then a little bit about how mentorship played a role in your respective careers. So to dive straight in, here's the first question we'd like to kick start with. I'm sure there were certain instances or, you know, um, down times really, when one has some doubts creeping in about, about whether it's a good idea to continue doing what you're doing and uh, whether it's actually going to be worth its while in the end, right? Uh, so how does, how did the both of you respectively get through those phases? Uh, maybe you want to start off Madhavi and then we can to so um, yes, there have been a lot of uh, moments when I have uh, questioned uh, whether I should have carried on as a lawyer. But I think uh, it's really eventually something in the gut that tells you that it's it's just worthwhile hanging in there. And this is not in sort of anticipation of any great uh, milestone or achievement. But I think the real um, the real force which really, I think, sucked me into a profession which I didn't know very much about when I dived into it, but it, what really kept me hanging in there is, I think, just the sheer, the opportunity to learn, because I think the one thing about practice in India, and particularly, say, in, in high courts, like Bombay High Court or the Supreme Court, is just the sheer variety of work. I mean, who in the world would, you know, uh, where would you get this opportunity to, to learn about so many different facets of life and society and the, well, the economy, the political landscape, the environment, all of that. And someone's actually paying you to learn. So I think that was, was the real driver for me. And of course, in moments of, you know, uh, um, you know, feeling dejected or that things weren't sort of speeding up. I felt that, well, I had, I had a lot of moral support, I have to say, from my husband. And of course, financial support, which, which was really, I mean, it made, me, it made it a bit of a luxury for me to carry on, which was, I think, important. A lot of people don't have that. So I think I was very advantaged in that. And I think also when there were moments when, you know, I felt, um, you know, I have, uh, uh, in the early days, of course, you know, you would have a brief on one day and, not, and nothing for the next two days. So I think I tried to fill up that time um, by writing and what, you know, you mentioned the book that eventually yielded the book, but it, it started really with a few articles and that eventually, I mean, of course, it was, it was a lot of hard work to, 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 to produce a book uh, while I was trying to manage a practice, but it gave me that sense of purpose and fulfillment. So I think, uh, you know, maybe just doing things a little differently helped to hang in there. Yeah. Um, Madhi, you, you touched about some of the kind of barriers and how, what you had to break through slightly there. Plus the quote we mentioned earlier on about how you mentioned 20 out of many years, you know. So what, what, what other kind of barriers, you know, did you experience, you know, as you tried to grow as, you know, we, we don't really like saying, you know, woman in law, because since you're a lawyer, but you know, there are barriers in place. So what kind of barriers um, did you face in your career? Um, and then what more could the legal community do as a kind of fraternity to support women in law, especially getting higher up the ladder? Well, I haven't thought of it as a ladder, but uh, I would say, yes, that in council practice, you will find very, very few women who really 
make it uh, to arguing council. And of course, now we have many more senior council than we, we've ever had, particularly in the Supreme Court. But at the same time, I think the real challenge is to be able to carry on our shoulders the real cutting edge work. And uh, you know, uh, uh, are our solicitors and briefing lawyers going to entrust women with that? And at the end of the day, nobody looks at whether it is a man or a woman. It, it, it eventually, you've got to carry the case uh, on your shoulders. So, um, well, I think in the earlier uh, years of my career, I think the real challenge was because I was very keen on having a family and enjoying my family. I think that naturally does uh, 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 put you back a bit in, in, you know, in, in one part of your life, which is of course your professional uh, life. And of course, I've, been, I've, I've said this before, but when I, when I came back after my first child was born, I was there every single day, um, you know, all days, of, of six days a week. Um, and uh, it took five months to get a new brief because the briefs which I'd held earlier just sort of kind of were, were, were redistributed naturally. Um, and uh, it, I think to, to, to inspire that kind of confidence in briefing lawyers, particularly when you're a counsel, it's not a job. You are not going back to ready work. So I think that is very, very challenging. And I think, uh, you know, when we, nobody, nobody teaches you this at law school and maybe this, these are conversations which we need to have. Um, and uh, maybe this should start in law school. Maybe men also need to be sensitized to this. Um, but I think you know the challenges with, with with juggling work and being able to enjoy family because I really believe that if you know we should be able to to, to have families to enjoy families if we want to. Um, and this shouldn't necessarily be a stumbling block. But there are you know I think women are wired differently. They they feel a lot of guilt. Um, and, and I have experienced that too. Um, I mean, my, my husband, on the other hand, is, is a very hands-on parent too, but I, I, I never saw him feel that the, the kind of guilt that I felt occasionally. So, uh, you know, how to deal with these challenges is a conversation we need to have. Um, and, and I think that, you know, after a while, if you hang in there, um, it, it, it's, it's not different from, from a man or anyone else. It, it's just... Uh, I think tenacity is the key. If you hang in there, it's, it's, it, it, it all gets much better. And now it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. That's very insightful. Thank you, Madhuri. Nandini, we were to shift the focus to you a little bit now and hear from you about if you know you had those moments where you were like, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can go on or whether I should even go on, right? And uh, also when you come with, with the surname that you come with, I think there's probably, you know, this is, uh, there's that much more performance pressure sometimes, right? Uh, so were there weak moments for you where you were like, hey, I don't know if I want to do this anymore? So, uh, Tanisha, my journey has been very different from Madhvi's or any other uh, woman in law who's sure. married and had kids, right? I've not had those additional pressures uh, additional tugs on my time sure. uh, you know so I, I can't speak to any uh, sort of a situation where I've had to kind of you know feel that you know I, oh I'm getting sort of you know torn between balancing family and this thing but I think in my uh, own way you, you kind of see uh, you know for me it was more a, a, an issue of whether the profession is it's good for me or not, rather than whether it's a profession is okay for me as a woman or not. You know, situations like when you see matters carrying on for years and years and years, and what you're doing, whether it actually makes a difference in your client's life or the person who you're helping out's life. Um, you know, you, you kind of question that a lot of times, right? And um, uh, to the extent that, uh, you know, a litigator's life is very, very unpredictable. Uh, I've had family and friends who think I'm a complete flake because, uh, you know, I've canceled meetings, family holidays, last minute. Uh, when I've joined them for holidays, I've spent the whole day working because a matter suddenly got posted. So, uh, you know, it's a very unpredictable life. And, um, and I'm somebody who doesn't like surprises, who doesn't like unpredictability. And I'm in a profession which is definition of unpredictable. So, um, you know, I, I go to movies after knowing what the ending of the movie is like. So, uh, 
I, that that I resonate with because I'm married to a litigator as well, and so even when we were getting married, it was like, will you make it to the wedding or will there be a court matter? You know, so I, I can, so I hear you completely. No, we actually we did have uh, somebody in uh, well in the corporate practice, not in litigation, who was uh, sending emails on the day of his marriage, despite the partners telling him, please shut off your phone. <laughs> So we know what time management, Nandini. <laughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> don't know how to do it right. Yeah. So uh, I think I think uh, uh, you know, just in terms of what are we doing in a space where are we actually making a difference to people's lives? That may, very often makes us question because you know you uh, when I was in Bombay High Court, especially come less in calcutta but more in bombay because bombay is largely high court practice whereas calcutta is district court and high court practice people who practice in the cities would understand what i'm talking about uh, you know we were mostly doing interim applications and appeals so just you know it's like a quick fix and you're moving on there was no seeing like an entire trial through or like you know getting yeah. final like so you know you often call, uh, and you know, uh, you were doing quick fixes for people and then even it was not sure it would happen, not happen. So that kind of make me introspect a lot of times uh, in my journey. And the unpredictability factor definitely is completely uh, opposite to how I am as a person. So I think these things have kind of um, been, uh, uh, but these are very small issues compared to what women uh, who are practicing law and are in litigation face on a day-to-day -day basis. No, but they are, they're still real-time issues. So thank you for sharing them and highlighting them. You know, we, we appreciate that. Okay, so Vikas, over to you for the next set of questions then. Yeah. <clears throat> Madhavi, we're going to build on something that uh, Namni touched on a bit. And you also mentioned with time with the kids um, in terms of personal sacrifices. So we know that... Um, Many, when we talk to women, whether it's legal or other profession, there is always a huge element of sacrifices that generally goes hand in hand with building a career. So have you had to make any kind of personal sacrifices, you know, along your journey as a lawyer? Well, after more than 25 years now, if I were to draw up a balance sheet, I would say no, not really. I think I have enjoyed my career. I have, uh, I've really enjoyed my work. Um, I uh, have enjoyed my family as well. And when I see my, my daughters now, respectively 22 and 18, and they are very opinionated yet sensitive young women. I, 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 I don't think that now I don't think I've made uh, very many personal sacrifices, but yeah, well, along the journey, you you do feel sometimes that there is you know in that mad juggle there's not enough time for leisure but then that's the advantage of council practice we also have uh, a very generous vacations where you know you can make things up um so yeah well leisure time yes but i have had time to pursue other interests i really can't complain um yeah i i, I don't think i can complain about that no. brilliant <clears throat> super nandini yourself um have you had to make any pers you know, personal sacrifices you know, whilst you've been pursuing your career as a litigator, um, partner at Kedans? Um, You know, I think uh, the theme for my story remains the same in terms of not having so much of an issue in a personal capacity. Of course, I mean, my parents and my sister, my aunt, we, I'm a very close-knit family. Um, so... Uh, I would say that uh, only to the extent that I haven't given them the kind of time they would like, because we are really like one of those hum saath saath hai family who kind of wakes up together and sleeps together. <laughs> so, um, but other than that, I can't complain. Really not. So, Nath, I'm going to ask you a question here and feel free to refuse to answer if, it, if it's too personal, okay? okay? But I'm curious to ask because a lot of my friends who are lawyers and are single uh, and are women have often said that, you know, I really want to find somebody, but where do I find somebody? Because I don't have the f time to go find somebody or meet new people, right? And that's often a problem. So while we're talking about women who are married and they have children and there's that spectrum, there's also the single women 
one is choice where you don't want to be with someone so that's a complete choice but then there are a lot of them who are actually 28 year olds 30 year olds 32 year olds who are stuck in jobs and when i say stuck i don't mean like they're unhappy and stuck but they're literally physically uh, you know the, the, they refrain from moving out of the office and such uh, so where do you go find people because you're getting done at 12 at night you're getting done at 10 at night uh, you know it's it's an unearthly time to actually even go on a coffee date so how does one pull that off so do you feel like that that can ever be the flip side i mean has it been for you at all uh no i won't say that at all um in fact i've said this earlier somewhere that uh, we really need to learn not to take ourselves too seriously everybody takes out time for what they think is important no matter what we say uh if you don't do that you can't survive you'll burn out it's a marathon it's not a sprint so uh everybody takes out time i uh, i very rarely see uh i mean we have i mean you know the number of youngsters actually coming in seriously into the profession and in the law firm culture is a is a huge number now right with the law firms uh, becoming larger and number of law firms going up and i don't think uh, uh you know a lot of them say that they can't find people i don't hear that as a complaint the way they find people may have had changed i hear a lot of my juniors uh, using online apps to find uh, uh people uh, you know they are meeting they going out for conferences seminars um i think the i think the space has i mean the interface has changed on how they are meeting people but i don't think it's that people have stopped meeting it would apply for men would it not I mean they are yeah. working for us too so I'm sure they 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 have the same thing. No I think that was a gender neutral statement actually. Yeah yeah definitely. Just responding to uh, Tanisha's question yeah. I think it applies both ways. True very true yeah so I think especially with law firm life I think Madhvi like you mm-hmm. said on the counsel side your time is you know still yours if you have better control but I think with the law firm life you know when you have demanding clients or you have seniors who are uh, they set the time line for you in those situations it has the probability of becoming a little more challenging i suppose if i may say if i may say that my time is controlled by my by my, my partners my juniors my clients and the senior counsels <laughs> wow that's a lot of stakeholders madhvi can't hear you i said and yet magically nandini finds a lot of time for her friends too yeah and, and to read and to read <laughs> okay super now i was going to mention that but obviously with you know madhavi and nandi both of you um you make very conscious that you've made very conscious efforts to make sure that you over your careers you get some kind of balance you know there will be points in time where we overworked and you just can't do anything about it but you've both kind of got to a happy medium of you know spending time with family friends and dedicating time to your hobbies as well as your careers so it's been a conscious effort to kind of put that time in um one one of the other things we mentioned even you know when we were talking earlier is the kind of role of mentors and how important mentors can be um in one in one one's career so um do you have any key mentors that have kind of helped shape your careers and inspired you and and if so who have they been uh, madhvi to you first on that well i have admired um many counsel uh, both at the bombay bar uh, when i when i started and in the supreme court i had i think i have uh, admired different things about different people but i think that uh, you know i never imagined um that you know i could i could be like them i think one it would be just too audacious number one and uh, two i think uh, i realized very early in the day that my journey is going to be very different from the you know the average counsel in terms of uh, you know the kind of time that i would be in a position to devote and of course i have devoted very very long hours to but you know i i knew that my time would be divided um and 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 the truth is that uh, while for example i mean there have been many many people i have learned so much from you know to start with from janak who was my senior at the bombay bar and then i have worked with so many seniors along the line whether um say mr uh, uh, pali nariman i mean the phenomenal industry not taking anything for granted at any time 
uh, I've, I've learned a whole lot from, say, um, Mr. Ashok Desai, who, who passed away last year, um, on, on, on leading a team. He was just phenomenal at that. Um, and the ease uh, with which he conducted hearings. I have learned a lot from uh, a lot of others, but at the same time, I think I, you know, I think it may be counterproductive sometimes to think that you can be like X or Y. I mean, apart from, you know, it, it may be unattainable, but that apart, I think it's important to recognize who you are and to cut your coat according to your cloth. So, uh, and, and as far as women are concerned, frankly, at, as counsel, there have been very few mentors. Uh, so that is something that, you know, perhaps this generation of women will have to build up. Um, you know, I, I can't think of anyone, say, at the Bombay Bar who had sort of been there, done that in terms of, you know, uh, uh, council practice and family and all of that. So um, there wasn't much to choose from in that regard. <clears throat> Nandini, what about yourself? Like, have you had you know, mentors, you know, kind of and sounding boards because, you know, to help you, you know, over your career for, you know, over the last 20 years? So, uh, you know, I've been extremely lucky to have uh, in my professional life, uh, my mentor, uh, Mr. Chakrapani Mishra, he's a partner in the dispute resolution team of Khaitan till date. So, uh, you know, when he joined the firm in 2004, he made a statement that I've got 27 files and a Nandini as my legacy to start the practice with. And I was put under his uh, tutelage to kind of, you know, learn the ropes. And I'd done a little bit of corporate law, which I didn't like. And, uh, you know, anybody who gets him as a mentor and a senior is blessed, I would say. Uh, you know, I had just graduated law school. I, there was no, I, I had no idea about how to brief a senior counsel or how to make a brief, uh, you know, small, small things. And we were just two of us and there were like 30 files to when we started off. So obviously, uh, you know, he couldn't be everywhere. So uh, he put his faith in me. I think maybe he didn't have a choice or whatever, but uh, you know, he would uh, go through the facts of the case, the law, and then say that, okay, you know everything now, you, sh you, you, you understand everything. So go and brief the senior and uh, you know, you will manage. And it, it didn't even occur to me to think that, you know, uh, what he's saying is not correct or, you know, I can't be like, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that people should be scared of or anything. And then when I would come back from the conference, he would do like sort of, you know, did you check on this? Did you speak on that? What did he ask you to research on? And he did this till, um, you know, he was confident that I could do it on my own. And um, I think that tremendously helped. Imagine after 24 years, you just graduated you go for a conference with Mr. Chagla, not knowing anything. And, you know, it could, it could be sort of scary for anybody, but it wasn't for me because of Mr. Mishra's fantastic mentorship. Most importantly, I think he let me build my own relationships. He never, uh, you know, sort of tried to, uh, you know, keep his, uh, keep me, uh, you know, away from building relationships or speaking to the clients directly. Uh, he said that, okay, fine. If Mr. If, this senior counsel works well with you. From now on, you will do all the conferences with him. You don't have to look at me now. Uh, if there was a client that, you know, gelled well with me, he would leave it to me to deal with the clients. So, you know, to, to kind of allow a junior to build their own relationships so early on and to trust them to do it well is really something that, uh, uh, you know, has stayed with me. And then he would give small tips, which uh, sort of really till date work for me, he would say that, you know, if your mat is at 11 sharp, then you should be there 15 minutes early to make sure that the other side is not trying to mention and get it adjourned. And it's, it's, it's stayed with me till date. And then he would say that, you know, things like, you know, don't stand out in court. If you make a mistake, then, you know, you want to just kind of, uh, you know, be able to kind of, you know, get away and like not in a in a wrong sense but just in a sense that you made you uh, sort of mentioned the matter but you don't remember the, this thing you don't want the judge to think badly of you the next time you appear so you know don't don't make uh, uh, you know don't go in wearing sunglasses yeah i mean you know don't put sunglasses on your head and go and appear too fashionable so while that might sound uh, unfeministic it really wasn't so uh, you know he's been phenomenal and he's my sounding board till date any problem that i have uh, he's the first call i make 
And uh, in my personal capacity, I think I shifted to Bombay when I was 21 and uh, completely uh, unexposed in terms of how somebody who's lived all their life in Calcutta is compared to somebody who's in Bombay. So I think my aunt really handheld my uh, growth in a personal capacity in Bombay and helped me navigate it. So I think these two people are big mentors for me. Phenomenal. I mean, what, because mentoring is not an easy skill. And I mean, I know my career, I was actually uh, in corporate tax back in London and I, I did not have a good partner mentoring me. And it really kind of, you know, I, I left the industry pretty quickly because of that lack of support from se you know, senior partners um, as a junior. So what advice would you give to um, others who are mentors or looking to be mentors about, you know, Nandini, you've mentioned some of the, the great facets, you know, Mr. Chakrabani has, um, but what other tips would you give to others to encourage good mentorship, you know, within the legal fraternity? So um, I think what's very, what I tell my colleagues who are mentoring interns or juniors uh, with them is that, um, you know, allow them to grow. Uh, give them space, allow them to grow, discuss ideas with them. Don't just give them things, uh, you know, mechanically and, you know, think, speak to them what they think about subjects. Uh, even if it is somebody who's an intern with you, maybe they'll have a thought which could help you. So, uh, you know, we've, uh, we've had matters where we've had interns working with us and have come up with such brilliant thoughts, which we as partners, you know, didn't think of. So everybody has something to contribute. If you think, uh, if you take them to be important, then you will spend time investing in growing their profession, I mean, mentoring them. So take everybody as somebody who has something to contribute. And um, also, I think uh, you need to be able to sort of, uh, you know, allow for mistakes to happen. Because uh, one of the very important things is that if you made a mistake, the person should not, your colleague shouldn't be scared to come and tell you because that makes it worse. So uh, I think that's something I learned with uh, Chakrapani and I've tried to inculcate in my team as well, that if there's a mistake, if there's a problem, the first call has to come immediately and uh, we'll sort it out. And later on, we can discuss what, what went wrong. But the first reaction has to be to, you know, fire fight. And that won't happen if your uh, juniors are going to be scared to report back. Yeah, super tips. Um, Madhvi, anything you want to add to that as, as well? Because especially now you're probably more in that role, like you said, there's a lack of women senior counsel that you're looked up to upon as, you know, as potential mo role model and mentor. I mean, if one aspires to be a role model, I think it shouldn't be just for women. It should be for both men and women. In my own chamber, I think we have a fairly even balance between men and women. And, uh, you know, I think women have to, at some stage, stop at least looking at themselves only in that you know, woman role uh, or, or, you know, that we were women here waiting to break the glass ceiling. I think at, at some stage you've got to shed that gender tag and uh, mainstream yourself. So, um, you know, I, I would just, uh, particularly, you know, in, in, in Delhi where, uh, you know, council practice is not a given. Uh, it's a different system from the one uh, practiced in Bombay. And therefore, I think, uh, for example, very often I receive, um, uh, you know, uh, mails saying job application. And my response to that would be, first, please stop looking at yourself as a job seeker. You're a professional. So carry yourself as a professional. I think if we start looking, no matter how junior you are, I think you, you've, got to, you've got to carry yourself. You've got to prove yourself as a professional. And that's something very often both seniors and juniors forget to do. I mean, it shouldn't be like an employer-employee relationship at all when you're talking council practice. Um, I think um, a junior is there in the chamber to really consciously or unconsciously pick up uh, how to be a good professional. And therefore, I guess as seniors, there is a responsibility of uh, uh, you know, carrying that burden and uh, uh, not treating your juniors as, as, as employees, that's important. Um, uh, and, and I think it, it's important to guide them on how they can build a career outside your chamber. Um, I think I would, you know, and, and I think that yes, the, the profession in some ways at that level is saturated. It's very difficult today for young juniors in Delhi to, um, uh, uh, to make a mark 
or to stand out. And so it's important to guide people on, on, on and particularly you have to do something different and out of the box. And I would, and I hope that, you know, I, I do try and guide my uh, uh, young colleagues in that direction to, to build up their own careers. I mean, that would be a, a great sense of satisfaction for me as well. I think I think I've also got the benefit benefit of it at times. <laughs> no, I think uh, I would just like to quickly add in uh, in uh, in a specific case like Calcutta, where we have conferences late at night. Um, you know, uh, I was in fact uh, you know initially not comfortable sending my women colleagues, juniors to those late night conferences, and then I thought that you know you're depriving them of. Uh, you know, the best of the matters because if the conference is late and I'm not comfortable sending them, I'm going to staff uh, a guy on the matter then and that's depriving her. So, you know, you then you figure out how to best sort of work a way that she is able to go and, uh, you know, and it's still somewhat, it can never be completely safe, but it's somewhat safe and it's, you know, you're okay with that situation. So I think um, everywhere we'll have situations where we, the women may need a little uh, you know, some sort of extra mentoring because of the challenges of a particular profession or a city, but that's, I think, very, very important. Mm. <clears throat> Brilliant. Well, I think great, great tips because, you know, mentoring is a key, a key distinction between those that manage to build great careers um, and those that sometimes don't because they don't know where to get the advice from. So I think it's great tips for both men and women out there who are on their early start, early part of their journey in their careers. Super. Thank you both. That brings us to the end of the segment where we were discussing mentorship and, uh, you know, specific journeys in sort of greater detail. We're now moving to the more fun segment of this interview. Are you both ready to answer spontaneously? Sure, we'll try. We'll go first. Are you? <laughs> okay. Fair. So uh, na, let's let's do it like this. I think the first 10 questions which I'm asking, Nandini, you respond first and then maybe Madhavi can. And then we'll flip it when Vikas takes over. Is that okay? All right. Super. Let's go, Nandini. Are you ready? Absolutely. Super. So uh, which law school did you go to, Nandini? So uh, Jogesh Chandra Chaudhary is the name of the law school, but the, the degree is from Calcutta University and then Columbia yeah. Law. Okay, super. Uh, what was the best part about being a law student? Uh, meeting very diverse people because law school was full of people I had never interacted with before. Okay. What did your parents do professionally and did that influence your career decision? My dad's a lawyer, so definitely. Okay. Uh, one thing you did in your junior years that now when you look back, you go like, oh my God, what was I even thinking? I mean, nothing specific, but I think I had a way, uh, I mean, I think I had too much fun. <laughs> you had too much fun. <laughs> so you, you look back and you're like, oh no, I shouldn't have that, have that much fun also. Is that today's juniors and how focused they are, I think what were we doing? The, huh. the generation today is far more focused and diligent than at least my generation was. Fair enough. Okay. Your favorite subject in law school was? I think a, a, a tie between IP and uh, TOTS. Okay, okay, great. Uh, the one senior you met in your early years and he or she left you feeling like that's who I want to be when I become a senior. So I think uh, I'll qualify that with the statement that I met in my early years of working because I've met seniors all my life. Uh, but the one senior who I met in my early years of working and I would think is very similar to who I would want to be like is Darius Kambata. I think his ethics, his look at the way he looks at things, uh, more the ethics of his practice is something that I've always found wonderful. And the way he looks at case law, I don't think anybody can beat that. He's outstanding. Okay, super. All right. Now the next question is actually, it's got seven to 10 questions under it. Okay, you have to rate Oh, I'm very Yourself bad with on a that. scale of one to ten. I'm very bad with rating and all. I I don't think I'll do well. See, yeah, you've you've done courts across India and all. You've covered all the jurisdictions. I'm not worried about this. Okay, so you're ready. One is the lowest. Ten is the highest. Shall we start? Yeah. Okay. 
uh, how entrepreneurial do you think you are? Six. Okay. How how much of a risk taker do you think you are? Negative. Okay. So sub zero. Negative. Okay. Uh, how thick skinned do you think you are? Uh, it depends. With family and friends, very. Uh, sorry, with professional stuff, this thing very. I think very rarely do I uh, am I uh, thin skin. Very rarely, but it could happen once in once in a while. So I would say a eight, seven or eight. Not bad. Okay. How optimistic do you think you are? Uh, seven, eight. When it comes to how comfortable in general. Okay. How comfortable are you with technology on a scale of one to ten? Well, um, considering I have a degree in information technology, not enough. <laughs> you have a your your bachelor's is in uh, information technology. Oh, as well as an in information technology. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay then. So, what is your number? If you had to put a number. I'm saying, I'm saying, considering I have a degree, it's not enough. So maybe a five or a six. All right. Okay. How empathetic do you think you are? I would say a eight or a nine. Okay. How approachable do you think you are? Ten. How creative do you think you are? Uh. Maybe five, six. I'm not sure. I've never thought about it. Okay. And how competitive do you think you are? Um. Well, no, not really. Maybe a fourish. I'm not a competitive person by nature. I think I look at uh, pro the my profession more as a way of helping my clients rather than being a competitor in terms of with other people. That's very beautifully said, Nandini. No, but it's okay. generally a thought. It's not. Uh, it's not a line. No, but it's it's actually a very fantastic thought, and thanks for sharing it. It's it's, it's a good way to look at the profession, yeah. uh, especially now that there are so many lawyers and so many law school uh, schools springing all across the country. It's it's a very good way to look at it. Okay. Uh, next question, Nandini. What lights you up? Like something that, that absolutely lights you up. um i think uh, a good day in court is very happy is, is a very good feeling and reading a good book okay nice all right if not a lawyer what would you be something to do with books i think maybe a book uh, bookshop owner or a librarian or something on those lines all right so I, i'm still not uh, i've still not given up on this dream actually you haven't okay okay super and what is your favorite chip Number of firm tradition in your case, firm firm tradition. So, uh, I don't think we have firm. I mean, not that anything comes to mind, but yes, when I was in Bombay, uh, Chakrapani and me would have lunch every day together, uh, no matter what. So uh, unless it's of course somebody had to wait for five or six o'clock, but every day we would have lunch together. That was sacrosanct, and I really miss that. How nice. Okay. Super. Thank you. You did well. I'm now going to move on to Madhavi. Madhavi, you're ready. Actually, something is wrong. Sorry, you're not very audible. Did you? What do you say? Can you repeat yourself? I said I can't compete with Nandini on this. Am I audible? Am I audible now? Yes. Yes. You. Yeah. Yes. You are. All right. Shall we start with you then? Okay. Madhavi is like, yeah, sure. If you insist. <laughs> Okay, all right. So, what law school did you go to? It wasn't a law school. It was uh, Pembroke College, Cambridge, which was, you know, offered many, many courses, and law was one of them. Okay, nice. What was the best part about being a student? So, I won't say law student, but studying the law. Well, my best part of uh, 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 the law the law degree was actually a detail. I just enjoyed being in Cambridge and enjoying that very special collegiate ambiance. Uh, it's a lovely little university town. Uh, you know, when I was there in the '90s, it was much less. Uh, there were fewer shops and stores like there are now, and uh, so it was a very very special. a uh, very idyllic uh, ambiance to be in so very special memories of of making great friends meeting lovely people how nice okay uh, what did your parents do professionally and did that influence your career decision um 
Well, my mom, um, my 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 mother is the most educated member in our family. She she's uh, she's got the most degrees. Uh, she's also she 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 wrote for the longest time in uh, she wrote middles if you know what that is. I mean that's gone out of style now, but uh, very special little pieces um, which used to be called middles in newspapers, uh, and then she. she she moved on to being a historian she published a biography of lord curzon uh, many years ago and then she moved on to uh, education uh, so she's had also uh, uh, multiple careers in that sense and uh, she's a fabulous homemaker my father on the other hand uh, is a first generation entrepreneur very self made um he's got fewer my he's he has only a second class degree in history from uh, elfinstone college so uh, my mother surpasses him there but he's actually um you know uh, there's a lot um i think i have learned from my father a lot more that i should have learned from him in terms of you know his knowledge of history and politics uh he has actually he 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 became an entrepreneur really to free himself up from um you know in terms of time on um, uh, to make time for to learn languages to write to dabble in politics so he's also had a very uh, varied career and i think that you know from my parents i i guess i i got the freedom to choose and to choose something different and to know that perhaps doing just one thing would not make me happy so um yeah it's interesting how they influence our decisions isn't it knowing yeah. or unknowingly okay super all right uh, next question one thing you did in your junior years that now you look back to and go oh my god what was i thinking joining council practice what was i thinking i mean <laughs> no what imagine then i didn't imagine that i would stick on for very long it's just that i had a law degree and i thought you know if i don't give it a shot now uh, i i i will never do it and um, uh, so it, in many ways it was a blind date so i, I wonder now what was i thinking <laughs> nice all right your favorite subject in law school was you know it's a subject that i have never actually uh, um uh, you know applied in my uh, legal in my career which is international law so we had this uh, really outstanding professor professor greenwood and um, we would just flock to hear him and it was a fascinating subject international law i i hope that someday i will get an opportunity to to apply that and uh, uh, also a uh, european community law because you know i was doing this for a lark frankly i i i didn't take uh, the idea of practice very seriously at least initial uh, uh, at that time so i thought i was just having fun and you know european community law i mean i knew i was never going to use it but it just sounded interesting and the irony is that company law and commercial law where i didn't take any papers i ended up practicing it became the mainstay of my practice in bombay so <laughs> okay interesting all right uh, one senior that you met in your early years and he or she left you feeling like that's who i want to be when i'm a senior well, as i said i i learned and i uh, so much from so many and uh, i admired uh, uh, many many uh, senior counsel uh, and juniors i've learned a lot from juniors as well uh, but i i couldn't see myself in in anybody's mold i just couldn't so uh, that's fair okay I, like that yeah no problem we'll move on to the next question which is the the very rapid part of this series that i'm doing with you on a scale of 1 to 10 you have to rate yourself 1 being the lowest 10 being the highest okay are you ready all right so how entrepreneurial do you think you are not very no maybe i don't know never given myself a chance maybe 3 4 maybe. okay how much of a risk taker do you think you are Well, I took a risk with my career, so I, I I'm probably quite a risk taker, maybe seven, eight. Yeah. I think you also took a risk with coming on the show, Madhavi. So you are definitely a risk taker. <laughs> I'm grateful that you are. Okay. How commercially sound do you think you are? Well, uh, perhaps not in my own. Uh, uh, I, I don't apply that uh, to my own uh, finances, but uh, I think. Uh, as a commercial lawyer i'm all right, I'm all right. okay how thick skinned do you think you are 
not enough. Just not enough. Not enough. Three, four. Okay. I, it's a skill that I still need to develop. Yeah. Okay. How optimistic do you think you are? Five, six, maybe. All right. How comfortable are you with technology? Mm, my junior colleagues would be laughing at me. No, I'm, 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 I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Maybe like four. Okay. All right. How empathetic do you think you are? Again, not enough. Um, six, six, seven. All right. How approachable do you think you are? I think I'm approachable. Maybe seven, eight. I think. Okay. Uh, how about creativity? How creative do you think you'd say you are? Seven. Yeah. No, no. Okay. Very creative. She's being, she's being very uh, uh, coy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll up every number by two in that case, Nandini. We'll take your feedback. Uh, how competitive do you think you are? Zero. I mean, it just doesn't work for me. I, I, I wouldn't be able to perform if I was competitive. Okay, all right. What lights you up, Madhavi? What was? Oh, sweet. What? Okay. How were you saying something? Sorry. What did she say? I can't hear. My daughters. Ah. Will agree with me there, yeah. Okay. If not a lawyer, what would you be, Madhavi? Many things, maybe. I, I, I think I wouldn't be just one thing. Um, uh, I think I might have, you know, ed education is something I, uh, I I do take an interest in. Um, I, I do a citizenship program for uh, children. Uh, I might have done something in music, maybe Nandini, not to uh, uh, spill any secrets here. Uh, yeah, but I, ha I do have a special interest in music, something to do with culture, maybe. Yeah. How nice. I'm I'm tempted to ask Nandini to spill the secrets you're forewarning her not to spill. Um, Nandini, are your lips sealed? <laughs> lips are sealed. Okay, what a pity. <laughs> All right. And the last question from me uh, to you, Madhavi, before I hand it over to Vikas, is what was your favorite chamber? What is your favorite chamber tradition? If you have one. I think lunching perhaps at the end of term. I remember that from uh, Janak's chamber. And uh, although we might not uh, uh, follow that in, in my chamber, may not be end of term each time, but certainly on birthdays, we, we, we okay. lunch together. So that's, that's, very so that's special. All right. Super. Well done, ladies. I'm now handing the mic over to Vikas, who's going to continue the line of questioning. Vikas, over to you. Madhavi, we'll finish off with you and then go back to Nandini. Um, what do you, what or who do you draw strength from? My maternal grandmother. Uh, she was actually, um, she was a homemaker for uh, most of her life. And then she transformed a hobby into uh, an enterprise. And so she was an entrepreneur in her 60s and 70s. And wow. Yeah, she was a national award winner. She made, she had a lovely soft toy uh, uh, business and she sold across the country. And, you know, it was amazing because she was a, she was an entrepreneur, a breadwinner for the family and uh, a, 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 a homemaker. She was always there for her grandchildren. So I think, and she was a very gentle and spiritual person. So I think, uh, you know, she is really a, a great inspiration. Um, it's, your, um, it's on the one in Mumbai that you moved, the reason why you moved to Mumbai. That's right. That's right. And I was really glad that I was there for the last year of her life. Um, and, you know, I mean, we, we, we're talking of, on International Women's Day and career women. You know, she was just one of those people who, who did it so effortlessly. And she was this very gentle, um, you know, self-effacing person who, who didn't make a big fuss about it. But when you think about it now, I mean... She was the career woman when, you know, career women didn't seem to, we, we didn't use that expression. So I think she was a very special woman. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, I think you've already answered the next one, a woman who has inspired you. So we'll, we'll skip that. Um, uh, right. 
you have to appear in court, right? But I'm not feeling very confident. And you've got 15 minutes to change that. What do you do? I might pick the, the best opening sentences um, and take a deep breath. <laughs> um, tell us about an aha moment that you may have had since you entered the profession you know, that confirmed your reason for becoming a lawyer. There are no aha moments in this profession because it's, it's a great, <laughs> the moment you think you have an aha moment, the next day is going to straighten you out. So, <laughs> so it, you know, there are no aha moments, no. Okay. Was there no case or anything where you met, you thought, you know what, this is, you know, I made this kind of change and it, this is why, you know, it's great to be a lawyer? Well, you know, I mean, I guess the the, the high uh, profile cases um, that have already been, you know, talked about, those are the, I mean, Triple Talaq, for example, was a big, big case where, you know, I, I you know, it, it, it took me away from the, 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 the regular stuff I practiced. And I guess it did make a difference somewhere on the ground. But frankly, I think it's, it's the smaller cases. It's the, you know, the individual cases, for example, I, I you know, in, in Bombay, I did a lot of corporate commercial litigation, but in, in Delhi, it was very mixed. It was very varied. So it may just be individuals, but when you can make someone small happy, you know, someone who really doesn't think he or she matters in the larger scheme of things, when, you know, you bring some satisfaction there, I think that is, is, is far more fulfilling at a certain level than the bigger cases. Mm. Right. Um, and if you had 25 hours in a day, what would you do with the extra hour? You know, I would probably want to write a diary. One, just for introspection, but two, also to record a lot of uh, little things that I notice even in, you know, in the course of my work or the experiences that I have had, which I feel that if I don't record them in real time, I'm going to forget. And, uh, you know, there are things which not only concern me, it's, 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 you know, about the profession, it's about the larger picture. Uh, so I think, yeah, that's one thing I would love to do, to write a diary, but I'm not able to make time for it. <laughs> yeah. um, three words that you would use to define the legal profession in India today. Um, at a certain level, saturated. Um, and right now, because of the pandemic, I guess we are going through this phase of ennui. Um, I can't think of a third one. I, 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 but 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 it, but it's working. It's working somehow with all these great challenges. The profession is still chugging along, and I think that's well, it's adapted very well to the technology side, um, of working from home. Yes, yes. Tell us about a compliment you were paid during the span of your career that has left an, an indelible mark. No, oh, I think I, I I want to pass that one. Okay. <laughs> 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 it, 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 you can it, tell us offline then. When you get a bollocking in court, that's what leaves the indelible mark. The compliments won't leave an indelible mark. <laughs> okay. um, uh, tell us about a client, case, client or a case that you worked on that was very special and why. Like you mentioned some of the smaller ones as well. But... You know, it's, it's really hard to sum up, but I, you know, I think... The Delhi gave me uh, an exposure to a whole range of constitutional cases, which I really, really enjoyed. Um, the NJAC case, the Triple Talaq case, but I think, um, you know, my, my first appearance, for example, uh, before um, a constitution bench in the media guidelines case, I mean, that was, that was challenging and it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, one time where I remember um, being told 10 minutes in advance that I, I would have to address a constitution bench of nine judges. 
And although I'd worked on the case, it wasn't from, you know, I, I wasn't quite prepared to argue, but then I just had to get up and, and do it. And that was challenging. Those are memories, I guess, you, you always keep with you. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's hard to really uh, uh, put it into one. Uh, there are a whole range of cases which are very good. Well, well, you've had a long career anyway, so I'm sure there's <clears throat> they kind of picking out one would be too difficult. Um, what are the best and worst parts about working from home during this, especially over the last year? Uh, the best part is probably having lunch with my family uh, every day. Um, and uh, also having my uh, canine companions around me, sometimes uh, threatening to disrupt hearings. Uh, <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> so that, that certainly brings cheer. But I think, um, you know, it, it's also a huge advantage to be able to appear in different courts across the country, just sitting on your chair from one place. But I think I'm... You know, it, it's nice to have that face-to-face -face interaction. I think we're, we're, we're tired and everything. Um, but I don't know how, how, how energetic we're going to be now. The thought of going to a court and going from one court to another is, is yeah. not the same thing. We're, we're getting too accustomed to this some part of sitting in our own home. Yeah, it's going to be like going back to the gym again after a long time. So you're going to have to build up those muscles for talking to people and meeting, meeting people and running around. Nandini, we're going to come back to you. Um, what or who do you draw, draw strength from? I, I have a very close-knit family, so I think from them. And a woman who's inspired you? Um, you know, my, my mom, my aunt and all have very, very strong family value system. So I think that to the extent my family values are concerned. And uh, I think that's, and if you look at it from a larger perspective also, I think my aunt who I lived with. Yeah. Um, and you have to appear in court, but aunt's feeling very confident. And you've got 15 minutes to change that. So what do you do? I would start looking at the list of dates. <laughs> okay. I think that's essential. Yeah. Right. Um, tell us about an aha moment that you may have had um, that confirmed your reason behind becoming a lawyer. It, uh, I, I don't think there are any specifics that stand out, but yes, in a few cases when we got orders which were really good for the client, you felt like you know you got you made you've made a difference in someone's life. So I think that was satisfying. Yeah. Um, and if you had twenty five hours in a day. What would you do with the extra hour? Either read or sleep. <laughs> okay. I love both of, both of those activities. Yeah. Which is very stereotypical of Calcutta then and Bengali culture. 101%. <laughs> um, three words you would use to define the legal profession in India today. Um, continuing, challenging, but hopefully changing. Um, can you tell us about a compliment you were paid during the span of your career that left an indelible mark? So I think um, what Madhvi said was exactly right. We remember the the, the bollocking more. But, you know, in terms of practice, what stands out for me is uh, Mr. Mukherjee is a senior, can, uh, senior advocate in Calcutta. Uh, is one of the finest lawyers in my mind across the nation. And... Um, in a conference, uh, he told me, it was on a subject I'm not very familiar with. He, uh, he told me that he trusted what I had given him and that for me was a big deal. The next day, the same Mr. Mukherjee you know, told me to shut up and sit down when I was trying to interrupt him while he was arguing. Yeah. I think there's no such thing as a, a compliment. Uh, you know, we, we have enough of both. Yeah. I think we might have to rephrase this for future guests then. In terms of telling us about the bollocking, you remember. <laughs> um, you can't take all this too seriously. Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. You just got to get on with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell us about a client or case that was very special to you and why. 
I think there are two cases in my in my mind that stand out for me, or three, but I'll I'll, I'll tell you two quickly. One is a, a family, uh, uh, you know, there was a dispute between family members that was continuing for 30 or 20 or 25, 28 odd years, and I was given the case at the fag end of it, and I finally brought it to a close. So uh, that was supremely satisfying. I felt, you know, some, you know, it had finally come to a close, irrespective of who won and lost. It, it was done. And that I think was really, really a great feeling. And then there was this uh, case of a woman, who, it was just before I was leaving for Colombia. And she had a horror of a marriage where, uh, I mean, if you can think of it, the problem was there in the marriage, the husband was an abuser, complete crazy maniac and bipolar. And I mean, things you can't imagine. And, um, you know, she she wanted a divorce and she hadn't been married long enough to get a divorce. You need to be married for a year. So uh, I'd advised her, you should, your case is fit for annulment. And she actually got that in record time of a few months. So wow. for that, that to me was uh, very satisfying at a personal level. Yeah, and that's really saving someone's life yeah. using the law. Um, and the best and worst parts about working from home. Best part, you don't have to dress up. Uh, I, I love that. Um, uh, worst part, I think there's no no substitute for home uh, human interaction and teamwork. And teamwork is definitely uh, not at its optimum in working in isolated uh, homes. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's the tough part. Part actually. Um. Litigation especially thrives on teamwork. It, you, you are as strong as your weakest link. One person's network goes off, your, it, it, it's a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That brings us to the end of the second segment. Thank you, ladies. You both did very well. This was fun. And we're now moving to the last part of this interview where we've requested both of you to bring a thing each or at least talk about a thing or a memory each. Uh, which is very, very special to you. So, uh, Madhavi, maybe we can start this one with you, if there's something you'd like to show us or talk about. No, I think since you said thing, I can think of uh, my gown, uh, my senior gown, uh, which was gifted to me by uh, Mr. Ashok Desai. Uh, he, he, he presented it to me uh, several months before I was actually designated. And I said that, you know, there is no way I'm going to accept this because, um, you know, I, I don't know when I will be designated or how it will happen. And uh, he said, no, you got to take this. And I, I left it as his home and I came back. And the next day he had a gift wrapped for me uh, and sent to me. Um, and I didn't open it, of course. I didn't open it till the day I, was, I got the notification, which was some months down the line. And uh, that was very special because, um, uh, of course, uh, with virtual hearings, I don't wear the gown. But uh, it was very special because he, 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 he passed away about a year after I was designated. And it just feels very special to, to have uh, a gown from him. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Nice. Thanks for sharing that, Madhvi. Nandini, how about you? Um, so... I mean, uh, there are two or three things. I have two with me. One is in office, so I couldn't get it. So these are two pens. Uh, the first was given to me by Chakrapani when I was leaving for Colombia. Uh, he said there's no bigger, uh, you know, power than the power of the pen. So, you know, I hope it stays with you. And uh, of course, so that's still with me. And my father actually is a man of very few words. He could have won the biggest case, but you will never hear him come back and say that I won a case. Or he could have lost a case and be upset about it, but you would not see it in his face. So, and he doesn't really, you know, say, oh, wow, I'm so happy or anything like that very often. So when I won that case, I told you, uh, when we finished that case, uh, which took 30 years to kind of culminate and all that, and it was in Supreme Court. So when I came back, this pen was lying there with a, uh, with a note that I'm proud of you. And to me, that's, uh, you know, I think it's uh, it became all worth it of 20 years of practice just for that one uh, minute. That's really a man of few words. Story. How nice. And the third thing actually is a gown present is, an, is also a gown presented to me by Mr. Kapoor, senior advocate, Calcutta. And uh, uh, he wanted uh, that we should be properly gowned 
in his words because what what i had wasn't good enough in his mind <laughs> that i am gifted with my name stitched nice. in oh wow how nice okay wonderful thank you both for sharing that uh, the, the things that are precious to each of you well this brings us to the end of this very very wonderful and enlightening conversation we're truly grateful that the both of you could join us and share what you did with the honesty and openness that you did uh, we've clearly established that the black gown can mean a lot more for women in law uh, than what we traditionally understand black gowns to mean for women in general and uh, it's thanks to thanks to real powerhouses like the both of you that uh, we're actually making a mark and uh, yeah i clearly you know you're paving the way for a lot many uh, down the years so thanks thank you thank you very much tinisha and the pass and of course nandini being as lively as always yeah <laughs> thank you thank you everybody thanks thanks everyone. thanks everyone for watching have a great sunday bye bye